Welcome back to another tutorial with The Essentials Club. I'm Maddie, and today I am so excited to take you through the steps of how to create your own cute dress that has a gathered bottom, some big oversized sleeves, and just a super simple throw on and an easy make. And if you want to follow along, this is what you'll need to get started. We obviously need some material to make this. This dress is pretty ideal to make it out of anything. Just make sure it's nothing too stiff, so something like a cotton or a linen. I'll put the suggested measurements you'll need for each size below in the description of this video. We'll also need a t-shirt to reference for when we trace out the top half of this dress. Make sure it's a shirt that doesn't fit too tight as we want this dress to be a kind of flowy fit. If all that you have on hand is tighter fits, that's fine. We can always add on some extra seam allowance when it comes to that point. We'll also need some pins, some matching thread to your fabric as well as a bobbin, a measuring tape, some fabric scissors, and some fabric chalk. And then our trusty old sewing machine. Radio, now that we've got that all sorted, it's time to jump into making this dress. This is where the t-shirt will come in handy. So we'll lay out our fabric all ready to cut out and then we'll grab the shirt and we'll start tracing around this. You can do this on the fold of the fabric or you can just fully lay out the t-shirt, whatever you find to be more straightforward for your process. So we'll just lay this out on top of the fabric, keeping in mind the size of this shirt and making sure that we shift it off the edge to allow for any extra seam allowance that we need to get it to that more flowy fit. So for me, I've got one of my essential shirts at a medium size. It's not too tight, but I do want it to be a bit of a looser fit than when I wear this. I'm going to be adding an inch and a half seam allowance and that will help me get it to a nice looser fit. I'm just going to pull the shirt up so that it's at around the mid waist point as that's what we're going to be focusing on just making the dress go down to there and then we're going to tuck away the sleeves as we're not doing them yet and we're just going to focus on the sleeve holes once we've got that all laid out and looking how we want it to we'll just trace around with our ideal seam allowance and cut out this first panel and then I'll talk you through what we'll do for the back. When you're tracing the shirt, feel free to make any changes to make this dress fit how you would ideally like it to. For me, I made the sleeve holes just a little bit longer as I know I like that to be a looser fit on a dress. And I also kept to the highest point of the neckline as I want this to be a nice high neck. Now that we've got that first piece cut out, we're going to fold this in half and then use this as a template to cut out the backside. But instead of cutting out one piece, we're going to be cutting out two as this is going to form a nice middle center seam and allow us to easily get into the top neck section, which I'll talk you through once we get to that point. But for now, fold it in half, place one down, and then we'll just trace around this and use that as one. We just need to make sure that we have a one inch seam allowance on this middle seam section as that will allow us to join it on the back side. So wherever you place it, make sure you've got some space on that side. And then we just trace around like normal and then add that one inch seam allowance. Now that we've got this new half piece cut out, we'll pop aside the front piece and focus on using this as the template. This is where we need to make sure that we cut out pieces that mirror each other. So shift around your fabric so you've got a new space to trace and cut. And if your fabric has a clear good and bad side, this is where you need to make sure that the good sides are facing when you place down this new template. And then because this has the seam lines already added onto it, we just trace it as normal. So now we should have the front main panel and then the two back panels which mirror each other. So we'll pop those all aside because we don't need them at the moment. And now we focus on creating the collar. I'll show you a close up of how mine ends up looking. So if you want this same style with the high neck collar and the tie back feature, this is where you would follow this step. Otherwise, if you just wanna make a normal collar and add a button in there to keep that section all closed up, that's perfectly fine as well. So we'll need to figure out the length and the width that we'll be cutting out this collar piece. So let's grab our measuring tape and wrap it around our neck. We're just gonna measure it nice and loose because if we have too much, we can always take off some. So for me, that ends up being 18 inches. And then to have that nice length at the ends so we can add a tie feature, I'm going to add 20 inches. So that takes it up to 38 inches. So that's gonna be my length. And then I need to figure out like the height that I want the collar to be. So for me, I just want it to be a nice little one, which will be an inch. And we're going to fold this fabric in half. So we'll double that to two inches and then we'll add an inch for seam allowance. If you want a different height for yours, say if you wanted two inches, just double that for four inches because we're folding it, and then an inch for seam allowance. So for me, my cutting width is going to be three inches. 
So now I'm just going to measure out a rectangle which is 38 inches by 3 inches. Now that we've got those sections all cut out, it is time to start assembling it. So we'll lay out that main front panel with the good side facing up. Then next we'll lay one of the back panels with the side seams and this top shoulder section all aligned. We should now have this top section and side seam section all pinned in place for the front and one of the back panels. And then we just sew one straight line for each and we move on to the next panel. Now that we've sewn those three panels together, we should have the front resembling something like that. And the back is kind of this weird open section. So next we're going to focus on closing up this back seam. So we'll grab those two panels and face the good sides together. So then you kind of angle the shirt like that. Lay it down. And just pin up this section. And what we'll be doing is sewing from the bottom up to the top. And then we're going to stop about four inches from the top. And then I'll talk you through what we do from there. Once we've sewn that center seam and stopped about four inches from the top, it should start to sit together now. So next we'll focus on this top section that we've left open. We want to clean up these edges by hemming them and making sure that they don't fray and they also just have a nice clean finish. So we'll do a double fold depending how much you've left of seam allowance, pin that in place and then you just sew down one side, go across the bottom and create a kind of square bottom section and then go back up the other side. And once you finish that, it should look a little something like this. It's just a nice clean hem section. Once we've done that, we should flip it good sides facing out. And the front section looks like that. And the back like that. It looks a bit like a potato sack at the moment, but we'll start shaping it and adding more character to it. So next we're going to focus on the collar. For this, we grab the piece that we cut out. And we're just going to lay it down and then fold it in with the good sides facing each other. Then we're just going to sew as close as we can to that raw edge all the way down the length of it and leave the two smaller edges open. We then grab a safety pin and we pop this on one side of the collar at one of the short ends and thread this through the inside of this tunnel that we've now created. You then just bunch it up and start pulling it over itself until you get to the other end where the good sides are now all facing out. Once you get to the other end, unpin the safety pin and then just pull it so all the good sides are now facing out. Then we're just going to focus on each of the short edges and do a single fold inwards of about half an inch and then we'll flatten that and then just sew one line along this edge so it secures that fold inwards and makes it a nice clean edge. So we'll have the top section good side facing out with the front facing up and then we're going to fold the collar in half so that it helps us find the center point and then that bottom section where the seam line is we're going to align that with the raw edge of this top so then the center point of the front and the center point of this collar aligns and we'll pin that in place if you have a preferred side of this collar that you want to be showing out Make sure you have that good side facing down with the good side of the top. And then we just continue around the collar and pin this in place until we get to the back section. Now that we've attached that, we should have a cute collar in the front and then this like open section that we'll be joining together with this extended tie section that we left on there. So that's the general top section all done. We're then going to start adding the gathered sections to turn it into a dress. Before we move on to this next step, it's a good idea to try it on as it is so that we can make sure that the fit is coming together how we had it in mind. For me, when I tried it on my top, shoulder section was kind of a bit wide, so I took that in from the top. And then for the length of the top, I wanted it to go to my mid waist section before I start adding the gathered sections on. And I'm actually very happy with where I cut it to. So that's all good on my end now. Once we've made those adjustments to make it fit and look all nice, we'll then pop it on one more time and we're going to figure out from the bottom of this top section how much length we want to add for the dress. So make sure you have a nice straight posture and place the measuring tape at the point where the top ends and then measure down to where you want it to finish. If you're measuring this by yourself, make sure that when you bend over you don't accidentally measure it too short because it moves. So what I suggest is just kind of hold the measuring tape in place as you go down until you figure out the length you want it to be. This might be a good time to grab a phone or a pen and paper to write this down to reference when it comes time to cutting. Now that we've found that full length that we want to add on, we're going to halve it. So for me, mine was 18 that I wanted to add on. 
So half of that obviously equals nine. And that is because we're going to add two ruffled sections onto the bottom. So by finding half, that's going to be the finished height of one. But then we'll add two inches for seam allowed. So the cutting height of mine will end up being 11 inches. So just to repeat that, how we find that is we find the length that we want to add onto the top to make it a dress. We halve that because we're adding on two different panels for the gathered tiered sections. And then we add two inches onto that and that will be the cutting height of each of our two new panels. Great, so put that number aside and we'll reference that when it comes time to cutting. Now we need to figure out the length. We're going to focus back on the bottom of our shirt. And we'll measure how wide this is. For me that is 23 inches. The new sections that we'll be adding on are going to be gathered. So to get that gathered effect we need to cut it wider and then bring it in. This depends on how gathered you want it to be. If you don't want too much gathering maybe times it by 1.25. If you want it to be like over the top gathered double it. But that just means that you'll need a lot more fabric. Just keep that in mind. So my bottom width of 23 inches times 1.5 equals 34.5. I'm going to add 2 inches onto this just to be safe and for that extra seam allowance. And my cutting width will end up being 36.5 inches. So just to repeat that, we measure the bottom of this top section times it by 1.5 and then add 2 inches. We then put the top section aside and start plotting out this measurement onto our excess fabric. So for me that was 11 inches high and then my length was 36.5 inches. I'll mark that out. Once we've got that rectangle all measured out to those specs we'll cut it out and then we can use that as a template to then create the rest. All up we need two panels cut to these measurements. So I've got these two panels all cut out and ready to attach. Then we're going to cut the second ones, but there's a catch here. Because we want it to be a tiered gathered effect, this is going to gather and add onto the top. We then need another section to then gather onto this. So we need to measure this and then times that by 1.5 or 1.25, whatever gathering amount that you want. So 36 times 1.5 equals 54. So my next panel is going to be 54 inches wide by the height that I want it to be. I'll then cut out two panels to these measurements. So because this ends up being an extended length of the gathered section that we already have, it ends up being quite a long panel, which is totally fine. Now it's time to start prepping these and gathering them ready to add onto the garment. We'll focus on two matching panels at a time and we'll just sew down the short side of each one, making sure that the good sides are facing. After sewing down those two side seams, we should have two tubes now that look like this. So it's time to gather each of them ready to add on. And what we'll do is we'll start at one of the seams. And we'll just sew one straight line all the way around the top edge. If you have like a pattern that clearly needs to be upright, that's how you would choose the top. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. Just pick one and go with it. I'm going to say one quarter of an inch from the edge. And just make sure when you're doing this, you do not backstitch when you begin or end as we need to gather this. And that will stop us from doing that. It's such second nature just to want to backstitch at the beginning and the end, but make sure that we don't do that. We're going to focus on the two threads that came out of where we started. From those two, we'll just pick one. I normally go for the bobbin one, which is underneath, and then grab a hold of that and just start shifting the fabric along this thread. Make sure you do it nice and gently so that you don't snap this thread, because if you snap it, that means we have to sew all the way around it again. But essentially, just keep pulling it along. The easiest way to do it is just focus on this beginning section. And then as you start to gather quite an excessive amount, just push it along so that it evenly spreads across this thread. Once you feel like you've started to gather quite a bit, this is when we can start to reference the bottom of the shirt. And then you'll know when you start to get a bit closer. So I've gathered that to the point where I feel like it'll fit well onto this top section now. So I'm going to fold it so it's inside out. And then start to align it. And one way to do that is just wrap that around so that the good sides of the top and this gathered section are facing and that it matches the circumference. Once that's starting to align, we'll just pin it in place and then just do one line sewing all the way around so that we connect this section onto the top. Make sure that when you get to the sewing part that you sew on the outer edge of this gathered line, that way that hides in the seam section. Once we've attached this bit on, we just repeat the same gathering and adding steps to the bottom layer of the tiered section. Now that we've finished ruffling those sections and adding it onto the dress, this is what we should kind of end up with. As you can see, my gathered sections are different sizes. I ended up having to 
sacrifice a bit of length on the second one just so I could have enough material left over for my sleeves. So it ends up being a bit shorter than I wanted, but that's fine. And likewise for you, if you want to make this longer or shorter, go for it. You just might need to change the height of these panels and maybe even add more to make it longer. We'll lay down our extra fabric and fold it over so that the good sides are facing outwards. That way this height is going to be the height of the sleeve and that length is going to be obviously the length of the sleeve. I'm dedicating half of this to each sleeve so I'll probably fold it in half and then cut that and then I'll show you how to trace the dress arm section to create the sleeve. So then we align this top shoulder section to that folded edge at the top and then just lay it flat so the curve sits naturally on there. For me, my front and back side of this sleeve hole are the same, so that's why I'm doing this all at once. Otherwise, if you notice there's a difference in the front and the back, you can do it section by section, and that makes sure that you'll have enough space. I'll grab my measuring chalk and start just tracing this hole. So once I get down to this bottom section where the dress ends, I'm actually just gonna keep going out by another inch and a half, and that way we'll have seam allowance to join the sleeves underneath. So just keep going past when it stops. Kind of following that trajectory of where the angle would go once we've got there we've got the armhole all mapped out and then we just draw a straight line all the way across to the edge and it should be parallel to that folded edge of the top we'll now pop the dress aside and just cut out that outlined area i've now cut out this first sleeve so when we unravel it it should look a little something like that where this curved edge is going to mimic the hole that we'll be adding onto on the dress i feel like whenever i do sleeves it never ends up looking like the ones that you see on like a pattern that has that really curved edge and the straight bottoms but sleeves have always confused me and this is just a way that i found that works for me and i find in sewing if you can figure out a way to do something that is a little bit different from the normal but you end up with the same result that's perfectly fine like we all go the different journey but end up at the same destination we'll now grab our dress back and lay that down as the with the front facing up then we'll prepare our sleeve when our sleeve is all folded like this this top corner on the fold where the curve starts indicates this center shoulder area and that center seam there so to make it all nice and aligned we're going to match those up first and then do the rest of it this might get a bit confusing but make sure that you're holding that center piece and then we just align that with the good sides facing of the sleeve and this dress unfold it and then we'll just pin that in place I just find once we have that first center top section pinned in place and then just keep pulling this around we can just start matching it all from there don't expect it to be nice and clean as we're doing this because it is obviously a curved edge it's going to look a bit weird on the main sleeve sections so let's just ignore that and make sure that these sections all line up pin it in place until we get back down to this bottom seam under the arm once that's all pinned in place it should look like this kind of bunched up weird mess but if you wanted to double check that it's looking all okay, just fold it with the good sides out. And that is starting to resemble what the sleeve will look like. So we'll keep it so the good sides are facing. And then starting at the bottom seam, we'll just back stitch, stitch the whole way around, and then sew pretty much directly up to the point where we started. It is now time to just close this seam underneath here. I find the best way to get prepared for this is just hold it up. This white section is the sleeve that we're looking at, and this is the top armhole section that we just added it onto and this is the edge over here that we'll be joining so I would recommend just grabbing a hold of that and just letting the weight of the dress push it all away and then align that top section and that is where we're going to sew so if this is the arm section where we added it onto we're going to find the stitch where it begins and literally try and pair up exactly where that is and then just sew across there parallel to that edge so my stitch starts about an inch from that top edge i'm just going to start right there and make sure that i keep that inch from that top edge and just sew until i get to this outer edge over there and making sure that as i do it i push that dress all the sides so i don't accidentally sew over that as that would be very annoying I'm going to pin that in place and sew it, and then we'll talk through the final steps. So with that first sleeve all done, we've now got some like lopsided one shoulder goodness. But essentially that is how your first sleeve should be looking. We're now going to repeat that process where we lay down the bit of fabric on the fold, place this on top, trace it, cut it out, pin it on there, and then sew that bottom seam together. And then it's time to decide how we finish this dress. Now with that second sleeve all added in, we essentially have a finished dress. All that's left to do is just make any final touches that you want a part of your final garment. 
that could be gathering the bottom of your sleeves or simply just hemming it and leaving it as is. Make sure that you go through and zigzag and overlock any of your raw edges so that they don't come undone or too frayed and ruin the garment. All that I'm going to do is I'm just going to hem the bottom of these sleeves and the bottom of the dress and leave it as is. I feel like with the gathered details at the bottom it's nice to keep it simple at the top. Originally going into this I kind of did want puffy sleeves like this but since trying it on I just want to keep it nice and simple. If you do happen to want to gather your sleeves I'll link the tutorial for this top below and it'll show you how to add the elastic sleeve bottom. If you did follow along I hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to see how yours turned out. Tag me at the Essentials Club on Instagram or send me some DMs as I always love seeing how your creations turn out from my tutorials. Thanks so much for tuning in and I can't wait to see you in the upcoming tutorials. I'll show you how this little number looks styled and out and about.